Okay, let's go to the, the, the second thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, which is how capitalism affects our mental health because uh, it is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. And uh, I, I have, I try to look at things through a psychological lens quite often because I think there's always some reason why somebody does something. Uh, I'm always curious as to like what makes someone into a psychopath or a sociopath or like what, what it takes to cross that line. Um, I think that's why I like some of the crime shows. Like I, I like I like the show Criminal Minds, and the and the only complaint I have with it is I just kind of wish the the they're called the BAU, the Behavioral Ana Analysis Unit. I wish that was like its own thing, right? Like you have the creative license to do that. You're a fictional program uh, that well, obviously you're you're kind of basing some of the some of the crimes off of uh, real incidences, but like you're still a fictional program set in sort of a fictional world. So, so why wouldn't you uh, make the BAU its own thing? Like it, it was part of the FBI, which kind of sucks because it's like nobody should be propping up the FBI. The FBI tries to kill people trying to feed everybody. Like that's not an organization we should be like, yay, FBI about. Um, but the BAU does talk a lot about like it, it, in the show, they do talk about like um, – they do talk about like the psychology behind certain things, why certain people choose to go in a certain direction, what causes certain traumas, what what triggers, you know, pushes people into uh, certain things. So um, I've I've always kind of been interested in that sort of stuff. And again, it probably has a lot to do with the fact that, um, you know, Bobby self-diagnosed himself and some of it was probably true. A lot of it was probably not, uh, you know, but, uh, that that has probably again kind of triggered a little interest in that and and kind of veered me in that direction so i wanted to talk about how capitalism is affecting our mental health first and foremost i think under a capitalist run education system uh we've all been gaslit about our history right we've all been uh we've all been taught a a, a certain set of things that's just not true um, like legitimately just kind of fucking made up, like fabricated, right? Like the, the whole cherry, I, I can't even remember what the cherry tree thing is with George Washington. Like he chopped down a cherry tree and he said he can't lie, but he did lie. I, I, I don't know, but that never fucking happened. Right. Uh, I just listened to Lee Camp and Graham Elwood talk about, uh, uh, Magellan and how he didn't circumnavigate the globe. It was somebody else that did it. It was, it was like a slave that Magellan had, um, whose name I unfortunately can't remember. Uh, but, like, that dude did it. That dude made it around the world. You know, like, Magellan died halfway through it. Like, he just fucking he croaked. It's just, like, shit like that. But, like, most of history is white and male and usually followers of Jesus in some kind of shit, right? Uh, on some kind of level... They, they're a follower of Jesus, which is a brown Jewish man that preached peace. But all of the heroes are like they're like generals and, and like white warriors and shit like that. Right. So um, we and, and we and we were kind of taught to like hold these people up on a pedestal. But when you really look at these people uh, at best, at their best, they're flawed, fucked up people. Right. At their worst, they're just genocidal maniacs. Right, like Christopher Columbus is a fucking genocidal maniac, and and every time somebody's like, "But it's Italian heritage," it's it's the it's the heritage of Italian people. It's like, okay, are you guys super pumped that your heritage is genocide? Is that what you guys want? Are we just gonna prop up these fucking like? Because I got a bunch of them. You guys can put up statues of of a whole lot of them. You know, we can start with fucking Netanyahu. We can go to Joe Biden. We can put up Trump. We can put up Obama. We can put up Bush. We can put up Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Richard Nixon, Lyndon B. Johnson. Do I need to keep fucking going? Like, there's so many genocidal maniacs in our fucking history. Like, that's what you want to celebrate? You know how fucked up it is to be like, oh, yeah, that genocidal maniac is part of our heritage. Like... It's the same thing whenever the, the Confederates say that. Oh, it's the flag is part of our heritage. Like, which part? 
which part of your heritage? The fact that it's an obscure flag used in a in a battle where you fucking lost, or you want this obscure flag to represent a fucking war that you lost over owning human beings, you psychopath. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, how much? Like, what? What is like? Why do you want this to be your heritage? Why are you proud of this fucking heritage? And then, you know, so we're taught these lies. And then when we find out that they're lies, like, what are you supposed to do, right? Then you, st then you start questioning all of your shit. And in terms of mental health, when you kind of learn, when you kind of learn about these things and you learn the truth of it, you can go one in two ways, right? It can either lead you down to, to finding out more truth and it essentially makes you like a, a, a radical, you know, socialist or whatever. Uh, that's kind of the path that I went to. Or you just don't trust anything ever because like that's how deep the betrayal feels. Uh, Again, it it affects your mental health in a way, um, you know, so that's one direction that it can go in. And then you do get to the non-white heroes, right? Um, because that's the, that's the other thing is like in history class, like nobody that looks like me or has my skin complexion or like Fiorella's if you, from the convo couch, like nobody looks like that in the history books, you know, um, the, the these are the the. The conquerors are the ones that are like seen as liberators. Uh, and then the non-white one, non-white heroes that they teach you about, like MLK or Gandhi, are cool because they're non-violent and they and they protest the way that uh, you know, rich white people get comfortable. Uh you know, like like protesting the way that MLK did with with civil disobedience and nonviolence is the only way that that protest should be done. And it's and it's taught to us that way because they don't want the other kind of protest, right? Because if civil disobedience doesn't work, you don't you don't learn about Malcolm X. You don't learn about the Black Panthers. You don't learn about what you can do to 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 dissent and 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 be subversive because the Panthers were subversive without being violent. They pretty much went around the government and was like, OK, you guys aren't going to take care of our communities. That's fine. We'll just fucking do it ourselves. That in and of itself, that's a pro that's protest. That's activism. That's dissent. But that seemed but but see, in, in a lot of instances, white liberals don't care for that because it's breaking the rules. Which is like, what do you fucking think dissent is? Right. So uh, I, I'm, I'm bringing that up because it's it, it again, it, it kind of gaslights you to, to be like, this is how you're supposed to be. If you're black and brown. Don't be loud. Don't be angry. Don't show a shred of emotion. Be this very measured, be this very calculated, complacent, you know, like do what the white people want you to do. Be the model immigrant, be the model POC that, um, that, that, that white people want you to be the white moderates want you to be, uh, which is, which again is something that MLK warned us about, right? Like, you don't, nobody really knows the truth behind MLK. And when they learn about the truth of MLK, I've heard a lot of white people just fucking, and, and not, and now I'm coming, coming down hard on like white folks, but I'm talking about like white liberals, like upper class white liberals. We'll just kind of fucking ignore it. They'll just kind of sweep past it. Like last year, I just remember everybody quoting the, the right is uh, the language of the unheard and not understanding where that fucking quote comes from or what that quote actually means. And basically, like, if you listen to the whole context of it, he basically says, yeah, I, I think nonviolent civil disobedience is the way to go. Marches, protests, like large demonstrations really show you like where the people stand in all this. But when all of that fails, because despite how much we march, despite how many speeches we make, despite how many uh, you know rallies we throw, um, you guys aren't listening and you guys do the same shit again and the system gets violent towards uh, towards uh, people of color, well, how much violence are we supposed to endure? That's the part that liberals choose to ignore. But it forces uh, people like that that look like me, you know, black and brown people to to act in a certain way. Like if I get too ranty on stage, it turns off a crowd. If I if I attack your favorite politician, it turns off a crap. They'll never come back to see me again. Um, you know, like th this is this is why this is why like staunch Democrats get very upset at me when I criticize Democrats because they expect me as a brown person to be a Democrat, to be an ally of the. De and I'm like, I'm not an. I've never been a fucking Democrat. I've never registered as a Democrat. I've never fucking like that's not who I, I've never said I was one.
they you know when i was younger it seemed like they were less evil but again see so, so now it's becomes that if you're not the model immigrant then you don't get to be a part of the club and and the way that they do it is like the white moderate liberals they shame you they isolate you they push you out of the, their their social circles they demean you they try to get you quote canceled right because you're not saying things that i like or you're not saying it, you you can believe in socialism but don't don't be angry about it don't quote marx so much you, you know uh we we still need you to we still need you to comply with capitalism you can be a socialist in theory but don't actually be a socialist don't go out there and feed the homeless don't go out there and, no, no, no no the government you're breaking the rules here and that's not the way that we want so so now it makes you feel excluded and it makes like fundamentally who you are and this happened to me is fundamentally who you are is unaccepted by this large society so that you're you're cast outside so you can't actually be who you are um and then now you feel like shit and it throws you into this loop of self-hatred where you want to be you want to be true to yourself but if you are true to yourself you get excluded from from the group and from all the social activities and all the cool shit but it, but if you become this person to fucking fit into this paradigm then you're then you're you know you're failing yourself and you feel awful so it's this feedback loop of just hatred just out of the way our education system models uh are our quote heroes right just the way that it tells you how to be a person of color through the example of the heroes that they set up in, in our education system and the reality is you are enough right who you are is correct you don't need to be you don't need to be isolated people need to like learn how to be a little bit more accepting of different ideologies i have plenty of them in fact some of them are coming over to hang out tonight is is I have plenty of friends who I don't 100% agree with, but we're able to like explain where we're coming from so that we have an understanding of what experiences led you to what belief systems. And to me, that's far more interesting. That's far more like I'm, 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 that's far more engaging. It's far more fun to do that sort of stuff. Like, and none of us are trying to prove that the other one is right or the other one is better than the other. Like, we just have specific reasons why we believe in what we believe in. And as long as you can respect that, the the 85% of the time that we agree is awesome. And the 15% that we don't agree might not be awesome, but it's still cool. Like we're not at each other's throat over the last 15%. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not saying like, don't improve yourself. I think everybody can use some self-improvement. Um, cause we all have flaws and shitty things that we do. And over the course of the years, we're like, oh yeah, I do do that thing. I do chew very loudly. You know what? Uh, the, it bothers the people around me. So I'm going to try to like work on that, you know, but that's a choice that you make. You, you, you don't like, you don't make that, you, you don't look at it and be like, oh, I'm, I'm constantly broken. I'm constantly flawed. And I can't, no, there, there, you don't have to beat yourself up that way. There's probably shit that you can improve on, and that's okay. But nobody should make you feel bad because you have to improve on certain skills or whatever. Um, and that's that's kind of the way that that our system operates. Uh, the other part of it is a lot of the mental health issues within capitalism come from feelings of inadequacy, like like you are just not enough or you don't have enough, right? Um, like poverty. That's that's what poverty is. Uh, poverty creates this class structure. That class structure creates um, d inadequacies and stress and uh, feelings of like you're 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 just not uh, enough as a person, right? And it's related, like that's that's how it's related to social class and social strata. Uh, and under capitalism, the reason why we have poverty is because capitalism doesn't give you the resources to just have your basic needs covered right like that's what that's what a lot of us need and uh, if we have our basic needs covered it alleviates most of our stress um it, it alleviates a lot of our our frustrations and you know all of the all of the resentful feelings that come out of that if you have your basic needs covered there's a far less crime people are probably going to be far less angry with each other and under capitalism, you have to earn your basic needs. That's how that works. You have to earn your basic needs, right? You, you, you do, they're just not covered, even though they're, even though it's basic needs, it's shit that you, that, that you need. It's not stuff that you want. Like I don't need soda pop every day. 
but having it is nice, so it's that's that's like a fucking splurge. But capitalism says you you have to earn your basic needs, and if and for whatever reason, if you can't and you're stuck in poverty and you're struggling to cover that, something is wrong with you. That's how capitalism operates. Okay. Uh and the social strata, this this sort of stuff affects relationships, right? Let's say you're not making enough money, uh, but you're dating, right? And dating can get expensive. Like if you're doing the traditional dating thing, uh, you know, that can get that can get kind of expensive because you're going out to eat, you might catch a movie or a play, then go out for drinks. So it's like, okay, on a on a casual Saturday night, I might be spending two hundred to three hundred dollars. And, you know, if you don't have that kind of money, and and that is somebody that you're attracted to is that they they need that kind of stuff then what do you do you know that now now that person is out of reach it creates turmoil it creates tension this happened to me after college um the first relationship that i had i was fucking broke out of my ass like i was paying off student loans i was barely making enough money i was living with my parents uh, and I would have a little bit of money every so often to go out and like buy buy dinner and stuff, and it put a strain on a relationship because there's only so many times that you could be like, oh, I don't know, why don't we d fucking drive around uh, until we know your parents are asleep and then we can go make out in your basement or whatever, right? Like, there's only so many times you could do that. So it put a strain on a relationship, but then you know the other part of it too is it sets you back into that feedback loop of not feeling like you're enough um, because you can't take care of this person. And again, the, the this, the, well, this specific thing is probably a gender paradigm thing within capitalism too, because under capitalism, the man has to be the provider, Brr, you know, like the dude has to provide everything. And if you can't, then you're a piece of shit and you're not a man or, you know, how, whatever else, um, the hyper masculine, you know, the hyper masculine Bible tells you to do. Uh, so it puts you back into that feedback loop of I have to be somebody that I'm not in order to make more money and get two jobs and balance things out. And then if you can't, like, let's say you do have two or three jobs, how do you maintain a relationship when you when you have that like? most of your time is going to earn money to just keep a roof over your head and and then and then you're going to go on a date when you're exhausted and stressed out and need time to decompress and stuff like how, you, you know now it's now now dating or or just finding a relationship or being with somebody that you care about is a stressful activity you know, so then it creates balls of resentment. And now like this is this is to, to me talking about this kind of an issue. These are kitchen table um, kitchen table issues is, is kind of what they're called. I think, you know, like some people think like this sort of stuff is way above the the, the sphere of, uh, of of average life. But it's not. These are kitchen table issues. Like the reason why you, why you guys why why a couple might be arguing all the time is because one of them might be tired, exhausted, and overworked, and the other one is not. The other person's just not. They might be in two different social classes, and and that can cause a, a, a fundamentally a good relationship to fall apart. But this is all manufacturing scarcity. That's all it is, and that's kind of what capitalism does. It it manufactures this level of scarcity, and it makes money a limiter. Um, and you know, and it, and it pushes this idea of consumerism. Like it tells you that the more shit you have, and you know, if you buy this type of shoe, if you buy this type of clothes, if you brush your hair a certain way, uh, consume, consume, consume. And I'm not saying don't consume because I think people need to buy things and it's completely fine to like purchase things that you are excited about. Like I got these compression gloves, uh, because my wrist tends to get sore after I type on the computer too much and I could feel my fingers cracking even when I was doing that. And and like I've had these for a couple of days, uh, thanks to a, a fan friend, Kat. She she was she financed this. Uh and now it's great. Like I I don't feel pain after I've done all my you know work and stuff. And even when I'm typing on the phone, like I keep this on so that it doesn't hurt my 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 things. Like I'm not saying don't buy shit. Like I think we need to buy shit, but it's it's just constant infinite consumerism 
and and that consumerism is meant to say feel better after you consume all this shit but you can't because if all you do is consume then then we're not creating stuff and then there's a class of people that just creates shit that you consume and and they feel resentment and and so that cycle just continues because somebody's always feeling inadequate within capitalism now the counter philosophy to all this is mutual aid uh because i think we're i think realistically like our natural instinct is to help each other out our, our natural instinct is to reduce suffering and inequality in the world that's that that i think is the is the natural human instinct is is you know that but the, and and that's why that instinct is so easy to to manipulate by by these fucking horrible capitalists right like look at the look at the way that we talk about gaza look at the way we talk about palestine and 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 even kashmir um you know i've 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 been putting out a bunch of videos about what's going on in kashmir we we've, we've all been kind of talking about what's going on in um in 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 palestine but the way they kind of frame it is well we're trying to keep people safe and they go oh yeah we have to keep people safe because we don't want people to suffer under the hands of 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 some kind of terror right so so they justify their violence as a counter to other violence but what they miss is okay if you want to stop a terrorist organization why are you bombing journalists why are you bombing cities why are you not allowing these people to rebuild why are you not letting aid come into that country why are you shutting off their internet why are you imprisoning journalists that's not how you help people but that's that's the thing is i think our natural instinct is kindness compassion empathy understanding solidarity because we're we're social creatures we're primates that's how primates are built we all need each other right like that gavin gavin mckines is that is that his name the the asshole from the proud boys has this fucking ted talk it's a trash ted talk where he talks about how um basically his basically his rationale to people that say like yeah it's all a collective effort because the iPhone wasn't just made up by fucking Steve Jobs. There were engineers involved. There's manual laborers involved. There were, uh, you know, designers involved, electricians, so on and so forth. The list goes on and on and on. And Gavin McCann's was just like, nobody gives a shit about those. Pe That's his rationale. The rationale is nobody gives a shit about these people, which is fucking just false. It's just a falsehood. But that's what we're sold under capitalism that's why the counter is mutual aid that's why the counter is is to like give in to that natural instinct and just help each other when we can the philosophy of, of of mutual aid is it's not charity it's solidarity it's just people it's just a working class sticking together that's it that's the whole fucking thing if you see someone hurting if you see someone suffering and you have the means to help them you just do it you don't think about it you don't sit there and weigh the options out. You just go, that's a homeless person. I have an extra sandwich. I'm going to give that homeless person a sandwich because I can't buy them a fucking house. Boom, you reduce that person's suffering, right? That person no longer needs to be in survival mode and be stressed out and be like fully conditioned by cortisol nonstop and make desperate decisions all the time. How? It's not that hard. The, the the socialist principle of mutual aid works on uplifting each other rather than the hyper individualistic uh, views of capitalism which is all about picking yourself up by your bootstraps right it's it's this idea that you can't ask somebody for help when and and, and this is and this is something that I think a lot of us go through is asking for help is a sign of weakness or asking for help is too difficult because we feel bad about it we feel some sense of shame there is absolutely no shame in saying hey I'm going through a really tough time and I need some help because guess what? 95% chance that people are going to come through and fucking bail you out in some way, shape or form. It might not be completely, but it'll ease what you're going through. But capitalism says, no, you have to figure it out on your own. And if you can't, there's something wrong with you. That's not true at all. There's nothing wrong with you. There are certain things that, you, you know, we, we get into a position out of no fault of our own and, and we need help. And we say, I can't get myself out of this. I'm going to need help. 
I had a boot on my car. I've got, I, this is not important. I've gotten boots three times on my car. That's not important. Uh, but I don't believe in parking tickets. That's not important. Um, but I had to, uh, it was 700 bucks uh, to get the boot off my car. And I had $175 in my bank account. Uh, now I had a tour where if I just calculated the amount of, um, uh, of guaranteed pays with, without any of the door deals that I had set up, I was, I was looking to make about 500 bucks on that tour, right? Net $500 in that tour. Um, I couldn't go on that tour to make money. And I had to call my mom and swallow my fucking pride and be like, yo, I'm going to need $700 to get this boot off my car. And, you know, I got a, I got a lecture and all that kind of stuff. Like there was a big, there was a big fucking lecture that came out of it. And I owned up to it. I apologized. I got the boot off my car. I made, I made the money. And my mom was like, you know, just be in a place where you can afford to get your own boot off your car, <laughs> you know? And I mean, now, now I am like, if, if that happened today, I would be able to pay to get my boot off the car. I, the, the grand scheme of the story is I think parking meters are stupid. Uh, and, uh, uh, we don't, we don't need them. Cause I'm pretty sure we can figure out that we need to park on the side of the street, not in the fucking, you, you know what I mean? Like, we'll figure it out. We're, we're, we're pretty, we're, we're smarter than what we're told we are. Um, so, uh, yeah, but this, this is what, what I'm discussing here, this notion of like going from this capitalist view on society and, and this capitalist way of life to this more mutual aid solidarity kind of way of life, the socialist way of life, um, is a paradigm shift is a total paradigm shift. That's, that's what a lot of lefties are talking about. If we rather than lived uh, uh, by, you know, trying to acquire wealth and money and stuff and all this other shit, if we lived on the notion of being good to each other, being kind to each other. And what I believe uh, the reason for the cognitive cognitive leap in in our uh, in our evolution was to be stewards of the planet. We were we were meant to take care of this planet, uh, not fucking wreck it the way that we have been like fucking crazy primates it, it would it would change di dynamically you would reduce suffering you would reduce crime you would reduce poverty feelings of inadequacy would go out the window and we would be uplifting each other and creating shit that we that we want to consume there's there's an equal balance between creating and consuming it's not just non-stop consumption on an on a planet with finite resources you know, my I think the eventual goal to a society would be something like an art resource based economy. Uh, but that's just me. That's 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 the view that I, I think we should be heading to. Uh, I might be wrong, but that's what I see is the right thing. But, you know, how are we going to get there? We're not going to get there if we keep sitting in this, in, you know, hyper individualistic capitalist world where all of it's about profit. That's why the pandemic was held it was dealt so poorly in, in a lot of countries is because it was all about securing the economy and not securing the people not making sure people are kept safe so all of the the ways that they handled it was all about uplifting and bolstering the economy and and i i'm, I'm not going to get into a big bitch about this thing because i because i bitched about it on on taboo table talk uh last friday and that's available for you guys to listen to but but that's that's kind of the reason why they're they're like hey if you got vaccinated don't worry about wearing a mask or social distancing indoors and it's like what do you talk? This goes against every every piece of information that's been put out there, and every logical piece of information that science tells you to, to to believe about herd immunity, right? Like, but but they're like, hey, we want people to go out and fucking uh, drink and 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 barbecue for Memorial Day and fucking Fourth um, of July. Let's not forget that uh, Memorial Day is going to be the one year anniversary of George Floyd. Um, but that's that's what they're doing because the focus is on the economy, not on the people. And if we shift that focus and if we make it kindness and, and compassion and empathy and logic and uplifting each other, all the principles of mutual aid, that's the paradigm shift that I think a lot of people on the left have been talking about. Uh, let's look at your comments. Y'all, y'all left, y'all left a bunch of comments. I got to, I'm scrolling way the fuck up. <laughs> Uh, okay. 
Uh, Cynical Girl says we're all flawed. We're all flawed, but some are extremely so. I agree. I agree. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Uh, Holly agrees with you. Uh, <laughs> over the list of people that have committed genocide. Um, you'd think they would have adopted the white flag. It's way more accurate. Ha! That would have been that would have been uh, 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 a lot better. Uh, Shane, uh, you're taking care of shit yourself. Then watch out for the government. They can't. They can't be having that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Anytime. Anytime somebody's like, "I'll take care of the community. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it." That's when the government's like, "The fuck you will." Where's that military? How do we use the military on our own people? Get the. <laughs> No reindeer games for you. <laughs> uh, Shannon also says, in the state of Ohio, you automatically get registered as a, a demo crip. Uh, if you vote for, uh, if you vote for one of the primary, I learned that uh, when I voted for Sanders because I knew it was rigged for Clinton and wanted to make sure it'd be more difficult for them with so many numbers against her in the end. The result was me not being able to collect signatures for the Green Party candidate I was supporting because I was officially a Dem. Yeah, it's uh, this is why fucking closed primaries are so toxic and we need to fucking get rid of them uh, because of exactly what... Like, I, I I registered out as an as an independent. I was like, I'm done fucking being registered as a Democrat because all I wanted to do was vote for Bernie or Tulsi and neither of that fucking happened and both of those candidates turned out to be super fucking disappointing anyway. Uh, but if I would have continued to, if I, if I would have been registered as an independent, I don't think my, I don't think they would have, uh, counted my vote. Uh, forced poverty. Ca yep. Capitalism creates, uh, forced poverty. Uh, Holly says education doesn't teach thinking. No, critical thinking is, is not a, a part of the education system. And I really think it should be. I think, I think in, in history classes, we should be talking about morality and ethics of decisions um and and what makes a good leader shit i mean shit like that should be a part of history discussions uh but it is not it is more about memorizing dates and facts uh so you can throw them out in an npr style trivia game um that's what the education system does i had a teacher uh, uh who you know occasionally pops into some of these live streams who did encourage that sort of thinking who did help us ask those questions and those are the teachers that fucking are awesome but that's not what the system wants. The system doesn't want you to help people think critically. It's not good for capitalism. Because <laughs> once you start thinking cr cr uh, critically, you're like, hey, I think this system is garbage. <laughs> Sounds like I'm a cheap date. Ha, huh? <laughs> me too. Uh, I don't I don't need a lot. Uh, we're 100% conditioned for all of this shit. Yeah, uh, that's all part of the ball of wax. Your conditioning affects you uh, every aspect of your life. And meant to keep you in your place. Yeah, I think that's why. Uh, again, it's like it's it's why a lot of people have a hard time asking for help. It's a lot. It's it's a it's a uh, it's why like a lot of people have a hard time accepting their flaws or 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 saying yes, I have flaws, and let me figure out a way to you know uh, push through. Um, I miss helping other people. It's the worst part of poverty for me. Yeah, and I was stuck there too. I couldn't help a bunch of people. You do feel helpless, but. Uh, you know, and, and part of that, part of that too, is, is learning like, okay, right now is not the time for me to help other people, but, uh, eventually I will get to that point. And when you're in a position to help other people, you just do like, I have, I have a, a statement of transparency on my donations page. Cause I want people to know like what their donations are going to help fund. Um, and part of that is to be able to help people uh in fact one of the things i'm trying to think of for doing live shows because i i want it i want to still be able to do like the community discussion thing like let's go and get a drink across the street or whatever or stand outside the venue and bullshit for two hours i want to still be able to do that kind of stuff um at, at, at taking safety into into mind but part of the thing i want to do is to is to maybe have like a mutual aid table where you just bring and you donate stuff, and then the next day I go and take that shit to a, a, a mutual aid place or a homeless shelter or what have you. Um, and I don't think I would have been able to do that a year or two ago on tour, but but now I'm I'm I can I'm in a, I'm in a place to 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 help you know make that kind of stuff happen. Um, 
so yeah, the you know we kind of ebb and flow a little bit, and and when when we're in a low spot, it's time for other people to help pick you back up. It's it's again mutual aid. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, Shane says just slide some thin uh, thin clot skeleton gloves over those, and you'll look like an old school punk rocker misfit. <laughs> Are you talking about these? That's what you're. <laughs> oh man, I feel like this is this should be the the pinned comment for for the uh, for the stream. Gates, Jobs, Bezos, Musk, Musk, etc. are garbage. That is correct, sir. <laughs> uh, yes, to mutual aid. I'm not so good at asking for help. I think a lot of people aren't good at asking for help. Uh, so I, I, uh, that's okay. Uh, you're, you're allowed to be bad at asking for help, but other people will just do it when they sense that you need help. Uh, Shane says the Torvalds would be a better person to, uh, to, to look up to. Even he has issues. Nobody's perfect. And what I've learned is to not put anybody on a pedestal because you'll end up being disappointed. Believe in yourself. hundred percent agree. Um, he also say you and your buddy Lee Camp should coordinate your evening live streams. I will keep watching and check this out later. I haven't caught much of anything live lately as it's been mostly busier away from the PC. Yeah, uh, I, I I know. I, I try to pick a time where like nobody else is doing streams, but it it gets uh it gets a little it gets a little tough. Uh da, 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 da. you guys are you guys are leaving comments faster than I can keep up with. Uh but I want to pop over to the Rockfin. Make sure uh, you guys are, it's it's Seneca Girl over on Rockfin as well. Um, Beverly says, policies, not people. Yes, that's exactly how they operate. Uh, and the policies should be about people. And I, I would even go one step further and say that we should be voting on policies. Um, that's something that Mike Gravel has suggested. And I have his ebook that I need to, uh, that I need to add to my, my reading list, my summer reading list. Um, Cynical girl wants me to take one glove off and moonwalk. I need, I need them on both hands. My both my hands are turning into old man hands. <laughs> Soak them in CBD. I would love to. I actually do have, uh, I do have magnesium cream that helps as well. And Ron's, Ron's been talking about the CBD cream, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna uh, try that at at some point. Uh, so okay. Uh, <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. 
Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.